What's up, Lore Masters? This is a continuation of a multi-part series examining the TNG episode, The Drumhead. I'm quite a ways into the episode itself, so to get the best experience, start from the beginning. Check up in the top right-hand corner for that. With that out of the way, let's just get into it. As we discussed beforehand, the conspiracy and need to find another traitor among the crew in their mist will never be as prevalent than it is at this time. Even Picard is reluctantly agreeing to move forward, and Worf has fallen so far that he is searching for a man's innocence, not his guilt. Sati will never again have her hooks as far into the crew as she does right now. Even so, cracks can still be felt. Picard has already pointed out a few times that Tarsus still has rights. The next scene is yet another, um, quote unquote, informal inquiry, though they do call it a hearing from time to time. However, in this instance, Tarsus is put in front of the crew of the Enterprise. It's open to anyone who wants to come. In previous episodes, I've discussed how this invitation to the, we'll call it public, has been a way of enlisting a mob. I still believe that, but it strikes me on this 70-ish rewatch, Man, I swear to God, I can now quote this entire episode without even having to see it. Anyway, it strikes me how all of this is meant to be a public spectacle. A key point is that this entire affair is not a court proceeding. And even though it's not an official court process, they are still judging the person. It's just now, it's in the court of public opinion. More and more in real life, we see on both sides how when someone is attacked that the excuse is this isn't a courtroom and words and actions have consequences regardless. It's being used over and over. Well, this scene is probably one of the best portrayals of that mentality, in my opinion. When challenged by Picard on making it a public inquiry, Sati states that she is doing it for the public good. It stops rumor and speculation, because why would anyone want to do this entire thing privately? What do they have to hide? If you're innocent, why wouldn't you want to defend yourself in front of everyone? I mean, hell, it's not like just putting an idea out there into the general public harms the person. I mean, people just don't jump on bandwagons and believe it because it's said, and lives aren't irreparably damaged due to a false accusation. Picard would ultimately lose the battle and back off, and the inquiry would continue. Riker is assigned to Tarsus as counsel, against Tarsus's wishes, might I add. It's important to know that this was the right judgment call by Picard and a wrong one by Tarsus. Tarsus constantly says that he's innocent, nothing to hide so he doesn't need a counselor. Even if that had been true and Tarsus was 100% innocent, he still needs a counselor. Having a lawyer present doesn't mean you're guilty, it means you're not stupid. Longtime fans of the channel will know that I have a background in criminal justice. Well, it was called pre-law back then, but it's criminal justice. I went to school for a time in that field to get my associates. Now, my bachelor's that I went for went in a different direction, but I do have some experience with the United States legal system. Anyone who has been in any type of serious court case will tell you that the entire thing is basically a game. You hire lawyers not because you've done anything wrong, but because they know the game. Sati is out for blood here, and she's using every advantage she can. This is why Tarsus needs someone on his side. We can see Sati's manipulations pretty easily. This is not an official court hearing, so Sati isn't bound to many regulations. Tarsus is a medical officer as well. He won't be able to adequately defend himself against Sati when she does this for a living. Having a counselor, a lawyer, doesn't ever really make you guilty. It just means you're smart. It's a good call on Picard's part, as I said, and it's good that Tarsus has this protection. The next scene is probably in the top three of my favorite scenes of this episode and it has nothing to do with Tarsus. Sati begins asking questions of Beverly Crusher. She wants to know who interacted with the Klingon spy along with Tarsus. It is obvious that Beverly thinks Tarsus is innocent and that this entire affair has gone too far. She challenges Sati on her questioning and tactics, and Sati begins ramping up against her. Honestly, if I was writing this, I would have extended the scene and had Sati just rip into Beverly, who would call her out for having a witch hunt. But even with what we have here, it's obvious that it's not enough that they are going after Tarsus. If you defend Tarsus, or hell, if you think that it's just gone too far, whether Tarsus is guilty or not, all of a sudden, you're in the limelight. It doesn't matter if you care about the innocent until proven guilty, or if you just think that what is being said as truth doesn't make sense. You're now a sympathizer. So get back in line before you suffer the same fate. You know, the Inquisition was one of the darkest times in Catholic history. I sometimes wonder, though, if the difference between those times and the mobs of today is only that the church wasn't more honest about what they were doing.
Anyway, me low-key throwing shade so vague that everyone will think I'm agreeing with them and whatever they hate aside. When Picard realizes that Sati is gearing up to go after Crusher, he steps in. Ain't no one gonna attack his baby mama. Picard, rightly, will not allow Satie to pull innocent individuals into the inquiry. With that avenue shut down, she begins to focus solely on Tarsus. In the next scene, Satie allows her protege to start the questioning. As I mentioned before, the fact that this isn't a court case begins working in her favor. If you rewatch the scene, the man, the empath, never allows Tarsus to fully answer the question. He also continues asking questions one after the other with them only mildly having connections together. This keeps Tarsus off guard and leads him to stumble across his words, saying things that may or may not be true. In a court of law, at least US law, this would never have been allowed to happen. This is a very deceitful tactic to get someone to say something that is incriminating. When you look at how cases are presented, at least in the US, basically, lawyers are creating a presentation for the judge or the jury to to show them why their side is right. That's not what this is. This is just an attack. Honestly, I'm surprised Riker didn't shut this down as well, informal inquiry or hearing or not. It's badgering and it's manipulative. Also, and I'll admit that this is probably going too deep into the meaning of the show and probably wasn't the intention of the writers, but even if it wasn't the intention, I think it's important to note. Something to consider here is that what is being thrown against Tarsus, some of it at least, is known not to be true by Sati and her protege. But still, she is having it presented to the public as if it were true. To be specific, it is implied that Tarsus may have given chemicals to sabotage the Enterprise. This is blatantly untrue, but only a very few number of people would know that. And now, this lie is out in the open, and never corrected. The public has it in their mind that this falsehood may be true. And imagine how horrible it will be for Tarsus if the culture of the Federation is to simply listen and believe. Horrifically, Sati and her associates also have plausible deniability in all of this if they get called out. The terms and words were couched very carefully. They utilized words like if or would you be surprised. And again, not being in court, you don't really have to worry about being a liar or being this manipulative. As stated, the idea that Tarsus assisted in sabotaging the warp core is put into the public's eye. And then bam, he's hit with a gut punch. Tarsus is proven to have at least lied once. It is shown that he does not have Vulcan ancestry, but Romulan. Think about that. Think about this manipulation tactic. They took an egregious lie and then combined it with a drastically more benign truth. And so now, the public thinks that Tarsus is guilty of being a spy and sabotage. They tied the truth to a lie to make it seem more accurate. Huh. And even listen to the dialogue as he is attacked. He is accused of honoring his Romulan heritage honoring it, which I honestly have my doubts. He seems pretty ashamed of it to me, hiding it, denying it, scared to even be associated with the Romulans. <laughs> Thank God in 2019's culture, we don't have to be ashamed of being a certain ethnicity or skin color because of the mistakes of our ancestors, am I right? Riker, Tarsus's counsel, advises him to invoke his right to not be incriminated. Which, by the way, he should. I'm going to discuss this more when we look at Worf's actions in the next video. But this is a very important point. Let's not lose the scope. Tarsus is on trial for possibly sabotaging the Warp Corps. They first have to tie him to that sabotage before they can even begin to look into anything further. And for those who are going to say, well, they're just looking into him being a spy, not the Warp Corps sabotage, well, that's not completely true, is it? They specifically go out of their way to put the sabotage on him before calling him out for being a Romulan. They're the one that made it about the Warp Corps, not me. And when you look at what they're trying to look into, whether Tarsus is a spy or he sabotaged the Warp Corps, him lying on his entrance papers? That's outside of the scope of this inquiry, and invoking his right to not incriminate himself is apt. And again, I don't want to get into this too much, but the understanding of this right in the real world has always been a pet peeve of mine. People assume that if you don't want to incriminate yourself that you're guilty. That simply isn't true. A person could not want to talk due to a myriad of reasons. This could be from something that's embarrassing to not wanting to admit to another crime they've committed. And regardless of if they are guilty of another crime or not is irrelevant. It only matters for the crime at which they are on trial for. A court of law, justice, is about finding the truth, not punishing a person for whatever you can find on them. This entire scene is everything that is wrong with a mentality that has always existed within humans. The need to search out and find a reason for something that has happened, uh, an atrocity, even if it's not that person's fault. 
The need to put someone on display to have some kind of scapegoat and then to attack anyone who might even marginally defend them. The need to state a falsity or something people aren't sure of and then use a truth to tie them together. And unfortunately, it doesn't even end there. And we'll see that when we look into how Worf goes for the jugular. But all of that is in the next video. Let me know your thoughts on this scene and how you view it. I'd love to know. As always, don't forget to rate and subscribe and never forget guys, all of our lives are a story. Make yours a good one.